Hey everyone, it's story time. So recently I got myself some new solder paste. This is Loctite GC10. It's a SAC 305. It's a T4. So T4 means it's smaller little solder balls inside the paste than a normal T3 that I've been using in the past. It's a really large jar. It's 500 grams. Way more than I need. But it's really, really good paste. It's basically paste designed for production lines, for manufacturing, not for hobby use, which is fine. <laughs> I don't care. Um, it was quite expensive, but it's got a super shiny silvery finish. So my current Tiny Pico, the latest Rev, and the solder on it just looks amazingly shiny. I love it. But this paste, unfortunately, requires a very high temp reflow, much higher than the low temp that I normally work with. So this has a soak between 150 to 180 degrees, and 180 degrees is higher than the maximum I reflow in my toaster oven with my low temp. And this goes all the way up to about 235 degrees for the reflow. And the problem with that is my toaster oven can't really do that. Well, it can, but Firstly, it can't match the actual graph in terms of how fast my toaster oven can get up to speed. But the poor little guy is not designed to go that high in temperature. I've got a, a PETG 3D printed exhaust tunnel, which obviously can't go 235 degrees, clearly, because it's now melted. But more importantly, because the oven can't get to temperature in time, it really struggles to actually reach it in time and maintain the temperature long enough to reflow. I can get it to do it. and. It you know, clearly, as I said, I've reflowed a board with it, but I can only do one board at a time. So there's like a thermal mass on a board, and the more boards you put in there, the hotter the oven has to get for longer to be able to reflow all of the boards. So one single board, no problem. But I can't reflow one tiny pico at a time. And in doing so, the oven still can't actually maintain that level for long. At some point, I'm going to just destroy the oven. So I caved and I bought myself a T962 a reflow oven. I bought it locally, so it shipped from Sydney. It was about $40 more than if I would have bought it from China. And of course I didn't want to worry about Chinese New Year and waiting a long time for delivery. I just needed the oven. I needed it to come straight away because I've got boards to build and I don't want to rely on my toaster oven to do it. So it arrived this morning and it's time to unbox it, pull it apart and I've called my mate Alan to come over again to check the electricals because I do not trust what's going to be inside this oven based on videos I've seen of other people unboxing and checking it. There's, uh, I'm pretty confident there's not going to be grounded properly. So Alan's on his way. Let's uh, have a look at the oven. Okay, here it is. There's no mistaking what's inside the box. Foam, so good for the environment. Time to tip it over. Manuals, excellent. In English, maybe, even better. I don't envy the person that has to clean this mess up afterwards. Power cable. Australian power cable. That's a winner. Okay. So here it is. T962A. So let's open it all up, have a look inside. So we can check all the cabling and wiring. Let's do it.
that's done. Time to plug it in. Power. One. No. It's on. Interesting. Switch looks like it's reversed. I'm just gonna turn it off again to check. Okay. Well, oh, power's up. Okay, here's the front of the unit, powered up. You can see that the handle's on a bit of an angle and there's a bit of a dent here. So it's been knocked or something during shipping. It's not really a problem, it just makes the drawer a bit harder to open and close. But that's okay. We have uh, the menu up and running and I'm not going to go through the workings of it yet because I have no idea how it works. I will maybe cover that in a future video. But here it is, a T962A reflow oven. I can fit stacks of stuff inside there. It's one of my clock boards for reference. I could probably do two, two or three clocks at a time, assuming I have even reflow. There's actually two thermocouples inside, one right in the middle and one at the back of the unit. Be interesting to see how that performs. Anyway, that's it folks. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and click that alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. To all my existing subs, thanks very much. To my patrons, you're awesome. I will catch you all next time. Bye.